Hello everybody and welcome to this short tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use some of the basic features in Keynote to build a custom object that you can then export for use in other programs. Specifically I use it to build icons and other things that I will use in Final Cut and Motion projects. Now I should say before I start out that I have very very limited graphic talents but the purpose of this tutorial really is just to give you an idea of what's possible and let you then experiment and figure out what you want to do with it. So in a recent project that I was doing, I used uh, an icon of an aeroplane. Now I could have just gone to Google, done a search, downloaded a, a free icon, used that in my project, but I wanted to try and draw the icon myself. So Keynote gives you some very limited drawing facilities. And one of the easy ways to create custom objects is to use the built-in shapes. Now, if I go up to the shape menu, you'll see there's a very limited number of shapes on, on offer. But I could, can just go through here and if I want, you know, there are symbols there for, for most sort of common things you can use. But what if I want to build something myself? What if I want to do something specific? Now, what I want is a very basic airplane. I want something that looks like a child has drawn it. So I can build that shape up out of the constituent parts. Now let's uh, take a few shapes out of here and let's start to build our aeroplane. So we'll, we'll use a, a rectangle as the body. We will then add a circle, which will move up to the front to start to form the, the cockpit. We'll use some triangles as the wings. Now in this case, they're the wrong way round, so if I go to the Arrange tab, I can flip these to whichever orientation I actually want them to be. So there's one there. It's actually the wrong way round, so we'll flip it horizontally. And we'll just clone that one, take it up, up above, and again, flip it vertically. And you can start to see, we can start to form the basis of our aeroplane. And I can continue adding shapes um, to, to give me the, the basic shape that I'm looking for. But the reality is that you know, it's, it's a pretty simple way to do this. If anyone who was born in the, the sort of 60s and 70s well, might remember a children's toy called Fuzzy Felts. And Fuzzy Felts gave you a whole load of shapes that were made of felt and you stuck them on a background to make objects like this. So very similar principle. However, what if you then wanted to maybe give this shape an outline? Well, you would think what the thing to do would be to select everything in, the, in there and group it all together. So now we have one shape. But you'll see at the top here, we've lost our controls. We don't have the ability to select the outline. If I go back to ungroup, you'll see the style tab here. I have the ability to add a border. But as soon as I group them together, and I'll actually just use the button at the top here, I lose that ability. So what if I wanted an outline there? Well, there's a simple way to solve this. Let me just ungroup everything again. I'm just going to take the right there, just make it nice and straight. If I select all of the shapes and I go to the Arrange tab, you'll notice these buttons at the bottom here. So the first one we're going to use is called Unite. What Unite does is groups all the shapes in exactly the same way that we had before. However, you'll notice we still have the style menu available to us. And when we unite the shapes, they, they form one shape with a common outline. So we can actually add a border. So simple. Now our shape's starting to look a little bit more impressive. If we want to, we can add a drop shadow. And you'll see the drop shadow is consistent with the single shape rather than all the individual constituent parts. And there are other options there as well. So what if we wanted to form a cockpit? We wanted to use a sort of a, a sort of half moon or a quarter moon shape. Well, we can do that very simply. Let's take, sorry, the wrong shape. Let's take a circle. We'll make it black. Let's take a second circle and we'll lay them over each other. Now I'm going to change the color of the second circle just so I can see what the black crescent looks like. I think something like that. 
Now I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to go back to the Arrange tab. Now this time we have another, op another option we're going to use. We're going to use Subtract. Now what this does is it subtracts one shape from the other and it gives the, uh, the, the color of the final shape to whatever is the lowest shape in the stack. So in this case it was black. So now I can drag this in and I can adjust it to be the cockpit of my plane. So let's let's do something else. Let's take a circle. Let's change the color to red. And we want to cut a circle out of the middle. Well, we can do that again easily if I make another copy of the shape, make it smaller, put it back into the middle. And again, I go across to arrange, I select both shapes, and I can use exclude. And so that will exclude from the original shape everything that was in the shape on top. So I now have my donut that's transparent. So if I shrink that down, again, I believe the Royal Air Force call these roundels. You could put them on the wings like that. You get the idea. So there's actually four options in the, uh, in the option to unite to bring shapes together and preserve them as one common shape. Intersect. Intersect is quite a, an interesting one. And again, you can, you can easily demonstrate this by taking a square and a triangle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this triangle 90 degrees. And I'm going to place that like so. And I'm going to take both of those shapes. Now, if I were to do an intersect here, you'll notice I just suddenly get a small triangle. Well, what happened there? Well, actually, if I change the, the color of this here, you'll see, oops, I changed the color of both. Actually, I only wanted to change the color of one. The piece that is overlapping is what gets left behind. So if we then select both of these shapes and do an intersect, the piece that gets left behind is the piece that's overlapping. And again, it takes the color of the lowest shape in the stack. But actually, I didn't want to do any of that. So let me go back to here. I want to unite these shapes. I'm going to take these roundels off. I'm going to take this shape. I'm going to go all the way back because I realize I don't have any engines under my wings. So let's turn the line off for now. Let's turn the drop shadow off for now. Now let's take this. We've united this into one shape. We're going to make this smaller. I'm going to put this on my wing like so. I'll make another copy. I'm going to put it down there. Now I'm going to take everything and I'm going to unite them as one shape. Now you'll notice there the cockpit disappeared. Well, obviously I don't want to lose that. So let's exclude that for now. Let's unite all of that. We'll put our cockpit back on. And all we've got to do is bring that forward till it's on top. So a really, really simple way to construct shapes. Now, if you want to export these for use in other projects, as I said, I use these in Final Cut and in Motion. All you need to do is make sure the background is set to no fill. So it goes black. Go to Export, Images. Make sure you select PNG and click Next. You now have the ability to save out that object as a PNG file with a transparent background that you can use in any one of your projects. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave me a comment below and I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye.